Dozens of major corporations, as a result of Trump's tax bill, paid nothing in oh. federal taxes. What you don't say is that everybody paid less in taxes than they did under Obama, or they would under you, you piece of shit. But I bet you're paying more than you thought. What, what, what are you saying? You thought you were gonna get a bigger price break. Screw you! <laughs> I wanted to get into the top socialist lies, top five myths that people, Good. Um, I, I guess these just continually, let's just start with this, Bernie Sanders town hall at Ugh. Fox News, it personified everything wrong with the left wing. Let's start with this. Uh, I happen to believe, Joe, that we have an absurd tax system. And it's while millions high, of people today are paying actually more in taxes than they anticipated, Amazon, Netflix, and dozens of major corporations as a result of Trump's tax bill paid nothing in oh. federal taxes. I think that's a disgrace. What you don't say is that everybody paid less in taxes than they did under Obama or they would under you, you piece of mm. By the way, did you notice he said <laughs> dozens of corporations? Dozens. Just run a quick search and see how many corporations there are in the United States. Hint, it's a lot more than dozens. <laughs> <laughs> If we missed a couple of dozen, that's okay. They're I'm not this sure is what one, this is the dishonesty. Is. They're paying more than they expected because they wanted an even bigger tax cut that you and the media deceived them into thinking they wouldn't even get. Even the New York Times did an expose on this. Many people who got a tax cut didn't actually believe that they got one at all. Most people saved money, paid less in taxes this year. The middle class benefited from the tax cut. Everyone did. But I bet you're paying more than you thought. What, what, what are you saying? You thought you were gonna get a bigger price break. Screw you! <laughs> This is how socialism works. It deceives people into thinking they're worse off than they are by lying to them and then using that misery to get elected, promising yes. to solve everyone's mm. problem with free money. And, and this was, we'll get to the top five, I think the biggest myths, the most pervasive myths. All this was reiterated, there was an article this week announcing means.tv, did you see it? It's an online socialist media network who, uh. without a hint of irony, uh. will be a pay, it'll be a paid <laughs> subscription service. <laughs> Steven, that's a tax. So I went okay. to their site to see what they were about. And again, let me know which socialist candidate you want us to live stream next week, starting at uh, 8 p.m. <laughs> Eastern. Sanders, Harris, Klobuchar, Buttgig, Warren. Um, I went to their site, Means TV, to see what they were, no surprises. I felt like this segment was long overdue. Let's cycle through the top five. All right, let's get yes. to it. Yeah. <laughs> Number five is that there is no class mobility. The cards are stacked against you. This comes directly from the new paid subscription <laughs> socialist <laughs> network. What it, you only balloon? really have like so many Four options. Balloons. You it's can go to the factory, you can go to the college, or you can go to the army. What do I have to do so I can get into a position to where I can chase what I want to chase versus surviving? Oh, I, don't, I feel like I have no options. And you proceed to name all the options. Three <laughs> unbelievable options. By the way, the offshoots from those three well, options are probably at least 3,000 options. <laughs> like I could work at a factory and work your way up to vice president, work your way, factory, yeah. this was in Detroit, this network, yeah. where a UAW worker costs the company an average of over $130,000 a year. Whoa. I could go into the military. Oh, you mean you could get tuition paid for? Work your way up to, I don't know, officer? Not to mention serve your country? Yeah. Oh, I gotta go to college and choose any of the hundreds of degrees available there? <laughs> this is like, but I like, only I got three do options. Anything, no. I can't what? do anything. Why are you complaining? Sounds horrible. Because the <laughs> options I got are only uh, infinity. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> there, there are three options to on-ramps, basically. There are three on-ramps to any option yeah. you want for the rest of your life. <laughs> I Okay. This is this idea that there is no social mobility in the United States. The cars are stacked against you. Over no. the course of their lives, 56% of Americans will find themselves in the top 10%. 73% will spend at least more than a year than the top 20%. Okay? So this idea that there's a static 99 and top 1% ruling class, it's just not true, particularly in the United States. And this brings me to myth number four, that capitalism only benefits the wealthy. Uh, we hear this all the time, that America sure is a rich country, but for most people, it's terrible. My mom actually told me, like, moving to America just, like, made everything worse. From yeah, where? America, I feel like money <laughs> is always the problem and the solution at the same time. Are you high People right now? You seem to be just doing worse and worse, and no. nobody really seems to be able to do anything about better it. Better and better. You know, why do our parents work all the time, and then it's still hard for us? Because you spend too much. Like a system in place that keeps us there. And to find out about that system, like... It's only $9.99 a month. <laughs> I, I buy 
your cars. <laughs> I buy your cars. <laughs> They're not going to stay poor I, for long. Honestly, here's the th- no system is perfect. But name yeah. me any system throughout the history of mankind that has pulled more people out of poverty than the free enterprise in a capitalist system. Hmm. Venezuela. They killed them all. There you all. go. You know what? Here, let's do a <laughs> mental Ouch. exercise. Everyone watching, everyone watching, okay. pick a system, any system right now. Think of it in your head, okay? No! That's the answer. <laughs> <laughs> let's just go under Quality Trump because they try, to, they try to amplify this with Donald Trump. Look, yeah. people are worse off ever. Yeah. We have the lowest unemployment rate in 50 years. Record yeah. numbers of workers returning to the workforce. Highest job uh, 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 labor. labor force participation rate. And by the way, even with all of that, we actually have both the lowest layoff rate and the highest amount of unfulfilled, meaning available jobs, since the Department mm. of Labor began recording the statistics <laughs> ever. Mm. It's, it's time to toss your hemp noose over the basement pipe because I only got three options college military or being an entrepreneur it's like I could go to school study and maybe like the stem field or get on shark tank what the f- like I did <laughs> We need a new system. Right. Uh, hit the notification <laughs> bell, by the way. Join up at loudlesquitter.com slash mug club. It's more necessary than ever. Uh, half Asian lawyer Bill Richmond can tell you. Yeah. Of course, subscribe to iTunes. And um, hit, the, hit the notification bell. I already said that. And rate yeah. us on iTunes. It doesn't really matter. Hit the bell. Here's, here's one it. of the biggest ones. You've heard this a lot, right? The idea that there's, there's no wage growth. One of the most uh, common uh. myths is that oh. wages have remained the same. If you factor in inflation and you look at U.S. People are working more, but they're not getting paid any more money. Here you go. You hear it all the time. And about half of Americans don't own a stock, a mutual fund, oh, or dear any, God. Means any expo- it means nothing to them. So they'd rather get a wage increase. The key thing maybe that we've been looking at for quite a while that doesn't <laughs> seem to be moving too much is wage or wages. Yeah. 2%. The trouble with 2% is 2% kind of just sucks. Wages Hard hitting reporting. Wages 2% is not enough to make anyone feel the job market boom. First of all, I don't want to go ad hominem, but is her chin penciled on? It's like the Burger <laughs> Meister Meister Burger. It has two very defined lines. Okay, this is just <laughs> as uh, problematic to use their word as the wage gap, the idea of 77 yeah. cents in the dollar. That just compares women make X, men make Y. One problem with computing wage growth the way that the Bureau of Labor the statistics do, is they, they do average hourly earnings. It's yeah. going to get a little nerdy. Let me try and go through this really quickly. Uh, that doesn't take into account lifetime wage growth. I highly recommend you check out the sources in the overlay uh, that we bring up here right now. Let me distill it for you. When you take into account individual wage growth as calculated by the census, uh, their, their current population survey, okay, those yeah. models, it's actually closer to 5%. Average Which doesn't suck. No. <laughs> average individual wage growth is always higher than the simple average average hourly earnings growth. And there's a, there are a few reasons for this. And I want you to do your own mental exercise because anecdotal obviously doesn't necessarily prove a point. But the empirical data, I believe, will match up with your anecdotal experience. So anyone out there right now who's done a job or been in a career in the same field of work for more than 10 years watching right now, okay? I'd like you to comment below. If you have been doing the same job or working with the same company, same field of work for 10 years, I want you to do some math. Have you only seen a 2% wage growth I, 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 mm, I would no. challenge anyone out there. Couple Lower earners at the beginning of their life, by the way, they tend to have the most wage growth. As people get yeah. older, they get wealthier, the percentage of wage growth is less. So if you're seeing that sort of pay bump bottom out a little bit, that now it maybe used to be 10%, 12%, now it's 2%, that means you're probably being paid pretty well if it's over yeah. a lifetime. <laughs> yeah, exactly. By the way, on top of that, wage growth just hit a 10-year high, despite all the models predicting the exact opposite, uh, and it seems like it's likely to keep accelerating. All right, well, listen, frankly, no, no, so no, much no. wage Not growth. US. You're going to be so tired of all the growth Not with US. your wages. You won't have room. Your, your wages will have stretch marks, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Here's a second lie. It's just, it's really <laughs> stupid, but I'm going to point out why I think you'll realize it's stupid uh, on its face, but you often don't think of it this way uh, that wealth inequality is a huge problem. We want to deal with the grotesque level of income and wealth inequality in America. Very few people think it is acceptable or moral that the top one tenth of 1% owns almost as much wealth as the bottom 90%. Here's what I call a stupid exercise. (laughs) If I doubled every single person right now, watching, listening, doubled all of our incomes tomorrow, every single one, wealth inequality would increase. Would you be pissed? (laughs) Would you prefer to live in a place like Cuba or Venezuela where people make whopping $30 a month in Cuba? The problem isn't Whoa. poverty, the problem is wealth inequality. And I know that there are some nations in between. I'm not saying your only choice is the United States or Cuba. Generally speaking, right. socialism simply socializes mediocrity, poverty. Matter of fact, every study that we have available shows there's no correlation between wealth inequality and the poverty rate. 
Usually as wealth inequality becomes big, as that gap becomes bigger, conditions of poor families have actually improved. And here's, here's yeah. you know, it's not so much a lie that they, uh, they, they push. The f here's the, let me set this up with a fact. Socialism has never actually worked, okay? Never. And they always try to claim that it's never been tried properly or <laughs> where it has been tried properly now, they've pivoted, and this is only the last 10 years, to the Scandinavian countries that they're all socialist. Here you go. What happened in Venezuela? They call that democratic socialism. But it looks like he's masturbating paper. on a oh, wow. subway. The problem is, though, <laughs> brothers, that any time there's been the attempts of ordinary people to engage in self-determination, they can get crushed by external nation. Look at U.S. policies toward Venezuela what? has been very, very ugly. Nicaragua in the same way. So we've never had a chance to really pull it off. So it's only been a movement so far. Well, so long as we know what democratic okay. socialism is. Whole segment. And if we know that in countries in Scandinavia, like Denmark, Norway, Sweden, they are very democratic countries, obviously. America to look more like Scandinavia. That's right. That's right. And what's wrong with that? Uh, well, there's a lot wrong with that. <laughs> First off, the snus. The snus? It's the snooze. The snooze? That? Snooze, it's man. It's a tobacco goes up your nose. Oh, oh never mind. That's Didn't snuff. That. No, snooze no, goes snuff in goes lip. in your lip. Yeah, snuff snooze. goes up your nose. Snooze goes here, snuff goes here. I don't know anything about uh, tobacco mm. outside of cigars, which, by the way, <laughs> ironically on. come from a lot of these crap hole countries. <laughs> oh, they try, hey, Nicaragua, that's the one Venezuela. silver lining. <laughs> they try to say Venezuela, a truly socialist, and, by the way, oil-rich country, kind of starting on phase three. <laughs> <laughs> Only failed because of U.S. policies? Truth is, Scandinavia, we did a whole segment on this, so I'm just going to br sort of br brush on this. Scandinavian countries actually, they built up their wealth under free market e economies, and right now they're actually moving much more toward free market capitalism, uh, despite their incredibly small homogenous populations, by the way. Hmm. And keep in mind, their top corporate tax rates actually lower than the United States were under Obama. We're actually going their direction wow. now, finally, hmm. for the first time. And something else that is remarkable to me, did you know that when Scandinavian people move to the United States, they have higher standards of living on average than those in the Scandinavian countries. In other words, wow. Danes in the United States have it better than Danes in Denmark. Swedes in the United States have it better than Swedes in Sweden. Without the high suicide rate. Without, is there a super high suicide <laughs> I rate? I knew it was Japan. Suicide. Well, I know Japan, but I thought- Norway. Was Norway, yes. That's just because of the Norway. weather and they all have to watch, let the right one in. Yeah, and by the way, how many times do they have to come on oh, camera and say, yeah. Bernie, please stop pointing to us as socialists. Yeah. <laughs> We're not socialists. Uh, they have a lot of, they, they have a social safety net, which yeah. by the way is why cars, for example, most, uh, uh, I think in Denmark, most people can't afford used cars. You can go to lotofcutter.com. Yeah. We wrote an article about this not long ago because the taxes are unbelievable. Yeah. There's a huge burden on the middle class. That being said, they built up their wealth under free market economies. So you can't claim that a country, if the United States, for example, tomorrow, if the United States tomorrow became a socialist country, yeah. would you say that we became the world's greatest superpower under socialism? No. Of mm. course not. No. Obviously, I would say that the facts are on our side, okay? Because I just listed over a dozen. But I know that both sides argue they're on the side of truth. Okay, let's put that aside for a second. One thing that can't be denied is that even in theory, capitalist free enterprisers, the conservative worldview can only function if an individual feels empowered. And I know yeah. that Bernie bros are going to say that that's a lie because of the system, man. All right, I know, I know. The fact is that the conservative message is predicated on the idea that individuals feel optimistic about their opportunities in future. Yeah. Socialists can only remain in power by convincing the entire population of hopelessness. Conservatives have to campaign on, hey, anyone can make it in America. You're good enough. Democrats and socialists half, but I repeat myself, half to campaign on you can't make it. You're not yeah. good enough. O others are going to win, you'll lose, and none yeah. of it is in your control because it's all a part of the system. It is a selfish appeal, and certainly right now in the United States, it's not based on truth. Right now in an economy with the lowest unemployment, highest job participation, least amount of firings, most amount of jobs available in decades, they're still selling you propaganda that you couldn't possibly make it without them. And I'll yeah. come out and say it, in 2019, only the weakest among you buy that lie. If you look at all of the prospects I just listed out there and feel, you don't feel hopeful in any way, there's, there's no hope for you. You lost hope long before you made that walk to the ballot box. That's my biggest problem with socialism. Hey there, if you like this video, subscribe or click one of these videos playing in a box. You know what? Hit the notification bell because subscriptions don't really mean anything anymore, especially if you're not 18 or older, at the very least, logged into YouTube as 18 or older, because sometimes people are 25, but they don't know how to use the YouTube system properly, and then you never, just hit the notification bell, or you hate yourself.